Hey friends, Petrina here with Homegrown Florida and today I'm doing something super crazy and you're probably going to be like, what on earth is she doing? I am chopping up my fruit trees. <laughs> well, not exactly. I am giving it a summer solstice haircut. Hang out with me for a little bit and I'm going to explain to you why I'm doing this and why you might also want to trim your fruit trees this summer. Now this big monster behind me here is Peachy the Peach Tree. Yes, I name my fruit trees, not all of them, but Peachy has a special place in my heart. She is a five or six year old tropical beauty peach tree. Now, the tropical beauty is a variety that is grown here in Florida. It's designed for Florida. There's a lot of different ones. I think there is a uh, tropical prince, a Florida version that the UF came up with. In fact, I think most of the, the uh, Florida fruit or Florida peach trees came out from the University of Florida, helped design these so that they have low chill hours. Peachy here only requires about 150 chill hours. I am in an area that usually gets about 200 chill hours, so she fruits for me perfectly every single year. In fact, last year, she gave me somewhere between 60 and 70 peaches, and they are by far one of the most amazing peaches I have ever eaten. I absolutely love this tree, um, and so we take care of her. <laughs> we take very very good care of her and one of the things that we do for her to make sure that she is healthy and happy and growing strong is we prune her typically i do winter pruning now winter pruning is very different than what we're going to be doing today which is summer solstice or summer pruning in the winter you want to prune her for health in the summer you want to prune her for height let's talk a little bit more about that now during winter, when I prune peachy, I am trying to do four things. The first one is I'm trying to focus on improving her leader, which is this branch right here. The leader is this central branch. Now it comes all the way down here to this spot. And typically peach trees and plum trees should not have leaders. <laughs> they should be an open vase and then these branches right here, like this one coming off, there's another one coming off right here, um, and then there's one on the other side that's coming off. Those are called scaffold branches, and those are actually the ones that are supposed to be here. But when I started pruning Peachy, I didn't know these things, <laughs> and so unfortunately Peachy has a leader, and so I have to manage this leader. <laughs> In my winter pruning video, which I will put at the end of this video, I did that by giving her what's called a modified leader. A modified leader just means that that center, that center branch that comes up has no branches on it. And then at the very top, it branches out and it does that base shape, like what you want at the bottom. I had to do this because she was too big by the time I realized this and learned this and so I did the modified version. Now if you have a peach plum stone fruit tree in your yard and it's young, make sure to take that center branch off when it's young. It won't hurt it at all if it's younger, but if you let it get as big as peachy here, it could hurt her and I'm not willing to do that. So I went with this modified leader approach. Now the second thing that I do during winter pruning is I get rid of any diseased or broken branches. Something I've learned this year is I do need to get rid of one or two more branches that are not necessarily diseased or damaged, but definitely struggled this last year. And that would be like this example right here. This, this branch right here had uh, fruit on it and had I taken the fruit off, this branch probably would have grown up like this. Unfortunately, I didn't and now the branch is weighed way down you can see it has like this curve and any fruit that grow on this which will start to grow on these green these green pieces right here the brown pieces are basically the second year wood and the green pieces are the first year wood this is where the, the peaches are going to grow next year these will not you can tell that if a peach grows here it's just going to continue to bring that branch down and it will eventually break the branch so during winter pruning, I'm going to also be taking these off when I take my diseased and damaged branches off. 
The third pruning that I do during winter is I take the cross branches off. So I did this last winter, but she's already got some cross branching happening here. There's a branch way in here that is crossing over and touching all the other branches in the center. Um, I'm trying to find one that's right in this vicinity. These two are kind of getting close to touching right here. <laughs> Anything that kind of crosses over or starts to rub against each other needs to come off. And I personally like to remove all of the branches that are on the interior part of the vase. So the vase is like this and I take off anything that's sitting on the inside. You don't want branches to kind of shoot up from the center because then they do a couple things. They touch each other and as they rub together from the wind blowing and, and the fruit hanging on it, they create sores and those sores create infection <laughs> or they create open sores that then bugs and disease and things can get in it and it can hurt your fruit tree. So I take them off. So the only branches that I have coming off peachy will come out from outside the tree rather than pointing inside. So that's the first thing I do. The second thing that I do when it comes to getting those branches that are on the inside is I take all of the branches off the leader. Like I mentioned, that leader shouldn't even be here. So for me, that means it should not have any branches. If it have branches, even if they're pointing outwards, they're going to point outwards to one of the scaffold branches and then it'll start rubbing with those branches. So the the center leader gets nothing. <laughs> the only thing it gets is at the very top. And we're going to talk more about that when I show you how I'm cutting it for this summer prune. And then the fourth and last way that I prune peachy during the winter is for airflow. If I have a big cluster of branches, like I, I see that happening right here. There's this huge cluster that I can't see into. I know that airflow is not happening. And living in the south, <laughs> where it's hot and humid and rainy, if there is not good airflow, that is just prone to disease. So I like to give her lots of airflow throughout the tree. So I will take branches off, even if they're healthy, happy, and look great. I will take them off if I feel that it is going to impede upon her airflow that she needs to stay happy and healthy. During my last winter pruning, somebody told me to go watch David the Good. And I do watch him, but I don't think I saw this episode that he did around keeping a small fruit tree. And I was riveted. <laughs> he mentioned this book right here. This is Grow a Little Fruit Tree. I'm going to put this in my Amazon store. The link is down in the description. It's a really easy read. It's a fun book to read. Unlike some other horticulture, permaculture books, you know, highly uh, scientific and such. This guy right here is actually a fun read. It tells stories about people who grew fruit trees in their backyard and their production and stuff. But it talks about a different method of growing a fruit tree in a backyard. And it's specifically designed for a small space. So if you have acres and acres of property, you don't probably have to do this. You can grow as big of a peach tree as you want. Unfortunately for me, I don't have that large of a property and I have a huge desire to grow lots of fruit trees. I don't know if you can see them over my shoulder. I have a line of fruit trees there and then on this side I have a line of fruit bushes and trees over here. I am growing them in very tight spaces <laughs> and that's what this book is designed for is being able to grow fruit trees in small spaces and the way that you do it is by keeping your fruit trees incredibly small incredibly short, shorter than what I'm gonna do peachy right here. All the rest of my trees I do plan on using this approach, but peachy, once again, she's my little, she's my little uh, experimental tree. I didn't know a lot when I got her. And so, you know, she's a variation. So she's not gonna be super short. She's probably gonna be about nine feet short with her leader coming out on top and creating another vase. She's gonna be a fairly tall little fruit tree. <laughs> But I am going to use the same methods that they talk about in the book, Grow a Little Fruit Tree. And that means in the summer solstice, which is the longest daylight day of the year, which happened in June, you are supposed to chop it down. Now they talk about chopping it down as far as five feet. I'm going to be chopping her down to about eight or nine feet. Now let me get you up close and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm trimming those upper branches so that you can see the proper way of cutting them 
so that you are encouraging growth um, so that you get peaches next year, but you're reducing the size to keep her compact, keep her root system compact because she's close to the house, and also to keep her productive. And those are the things we want when we're growing a lot of fruit trees in a very small space. This is also a really good idea if you grow your fruit trees in pots. Since you do want to keep their root structure small <laughs> because it's in a pot, you have to keep the actual whole tree small because the root system is going to grow to the size of the height and width of the tree. So a little helpful hint there. Now let's get in close and I'm going to show you how I cut her. So we're going to focus on this section right here, which is one of the scaffold branches. And I'm going to start with the top there. So this guy right here, I need to bring him down considerably. Um, he is way too tall. And to be honest, I'm not really happy with any of these. So if you can see right here, uh, that was my cut from winter. I think I'm actually going to cut right below that and get rid of this whole tree. And I'm leaving this branch right here, which is my outward facing branch. That's the one I like. Perfect. I'm also going to bring down this branch right here all the way to this little guy that's pointing out as well. And as you can see, I'm kind of cutting at an angle because I want, when the rain comes through, I want it to sheet off. And then we got this guy back here, same thing. I'm going to leave this little, actually he's inward facing, so I think I'm gonna get rid of the whole thing. Now we've got these. And you can see from this one, I cut the branch and then I'm leaving this one. He's gonna end up being what continues to grow. This one will stop growing. Then we have this guy right here. I think what I'm gonna do with him, I don't really have outward facing except this one. I think that's what I'm gonna take is this one right here. And I'm also gonna remove this one because it's inward facing. So the one, uh, the, I'll do the trimming. Well, let's just do it while we're here. I was gonna say, I was gonna do the trimming of these later on, but might as well do them now. So the two that I'm leaving are these two outward facing ones. So let's step back and look at this tree. So you can see, PG got qu cut quite a bit there. Now these are extending out pretty far. So let's go ahead and trim these a bit too. So I'm going to take this one. I could take it down to here, but that's still a little far out than what I want. So I'm gonna take it down to here, the next one that has the little offshoot. And she could grow out from either side, from this side or this side. They're both pretty outward facing, so I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to do this one as well. I'm just kind of looking at the tree. See, there's none right here. This is where I would prefer. But since we're going to be a little bit aggressive, I'm just going to take it down to this one right here. And now let's take a look. Let's step back and take a look. Nice and short. We got one right here. It's a little bit on the long side. We're gonna find that branch that I like that comes out. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go for that one. And we're gonna take everything out above it. Okay. I like that one. I'm thinking about this one. Hmm, yeah. There we go. And I'm happy. That's a good scaffold. Well, wait, we got one more. This one I didn't even realize was part of this tree. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just take the tip of this one off, leaving this guy right here. Now that might cause an issue because this one looks like it's about to grow into that, but I'll have to do something about that during winter. I'm not going to focus on that right now. 
Height-wise, this old scaffold branch has come down in size, and I really like that size. It will continue to grow up, and we're going to have to keep continuing to bring it back down. But for now, I think that's a good size. Let's work on the rest of them. Now we're going to move on and do the rest of the tree. Now the only thing we have left is that leader branch. And that's the one we expect to get taller than the rest of the tree. So it actually is at a really good height. But I'm gonna take a look around it and see if there's anything that looks a little too close or I don't know. I'm just gonna look at it. So far it looks okay. got several scaffolding branches and now I got to pick my favorites so this one's definitely coming off it's a little weaker I've got one two three I'm gonna take that guy off so I think those are gonna be my three scaffolds uh, I'm gonna top them a little bit I'm picking this as one of my favorites I'm picking that as one of my favorites and that one right there so as you can see peachy is a lot shorter than what she was and she is a lot more of a manageable size which is great if you're trying to grow a little fruit tree <laughs> now I do this in summer and the book recommends doing it in summer for a couple different reasons number one we're past the summer solstice which means that the daylights are going to start to become shorter this is good because her expansive amount of growth has already occurred. Now she's still going to grow a little bit, which is fine. I want her to heal. I want her to grow her branches that I left behind a little bit bigger. Give that energy that she has into the remaining branches so that they get strong and healthy and are able to hold the fruit when spring comes around. Also doing that prune now versus in winter when I have to do so much other pruning gives her two chances during the year to you know, heal from all of this and grow healthy. So if you did an excessive amount of pruning during the winter, you could damage her. She could have a really bad fruit production by splitting it up two times in the year, one in summer to keep her short, and then in winter to keep her lean and good airflow and healthy. That is your best bet. Now you could definitely go much shorter than this. I know people that do them up to my height, five feet. So you can definitely chop them down pretty short, but you wanna do this when they're young. You don't wanna wait till they're peachy size because you never wanna take off more than a third of the tree at a time. So doing it while they're young is healthier for the tree than doing it while it's super big like peachy. I, we also really love a lot of peaches. We are going to eat them. We are gonna use them. I'm not worried about her being a little bit taller, but those guys down there in that row, they're gonna get pruned to the five feet height. I'm gonna keep them super short, as long as it is a tree that you know, adheres to this type of method. There are some trees that don't benefit from this, and it definitely mentions those trees in the books, and I have one, which is that pomegranate back there. So. Unless it is the pomegranate, the rest of them are going to get this haircut treatment and they are going to be kept super short so that we can control their height and being able to use this space and not get too close to the house and not shade each other out. There's just a bunch of really good reasons when you're growing fruit trees in a small space. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to head down into the comments and leave me a note on what you are doing with your fruit trees this summer. Happy gardening, guys.